Hello, my beautiful virtual friends. Welcome to Happy, Sad, Confused's Holiday Benefit with Katrina Balf. I'm Josh Horowitz. Maybe you're here because you're a fan of mine and Happy, Sad, Confused. Maybe you're here because you're a fan of Katrina's. Maybe you're a fan of all of the above. However you guys got here, I am honestly so thrilled that you are here. Happy holidays to everybody. I hope you're staying safe and with your family. If you're not with your family, we're going to keep you company for the next hour. Um, we are live, unless you're watching this on tape, in which case we were live. Trust me. Um, anyway, we're live in our virtual home, thanks to Symphony Space, raising a bunch of money for my dear mom's amazing Harlem Is project. I'm going to talk a little bit about that later on. We did one of these benefits last year in person, and I'm thrilled that we found a way to do it again in this crazy year. Um, okay, but enough about me and the charity stuff. We'll get to the, all that stuff later. Let's get to our lady of the hour. She's a four-time Golden Globe nominee, a champion connoisseur of gin, a generous and kind actor and human being, the star of Outlander. It's Katrina Balf. Hello. Hello. <laughs> oh, you're, you're already... Hi, how are you? You were already kind of like going in and out of the space-time continuum, but I can see you. I can hear you. Oh, good. I was like, hi, Josh. How are you? I was just <laughs> climbing out of my Christmas tree. You're so festive. Yeah. You're, you're beating me at that. Um, you know, I got to bring a little festive cheer. I appreciate that. Do you feel the, um, the deafening applause of our audience? We have over 2,000 <laughs> people watching this right now. That's amazing. I see lots of like hellos and yays and popping up on the screen. So hi. Hi, everybody. Um, so, so uh, you know, uh, this is going to be the first of many thank yous for doing this today. This, this honestly, as you know, this means a lot to me. Um, and I'm, I'm so appreciative of your time. Um, I'm just saying the nice stuff now so we can get to the embarrassing <laughs> stuff for the next We can move on hour. to the nasty stuff later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's the stuff. That's the stuff. Sure. Exactly, exactly. Um, so first of all, the most important thing, what are we drinking tonight? Are we drinking? Um, well, we are, we're going to start with a little forget-me-not gin. Um, I actually have it with some uh, tonic and lemon, but I'm almost finished the bottle and I don't have any more left here. So I'm going to back it up with a beer later. Just, you know, just depends how this hour goes. Hey. <laughs> yeah, in the first five minutes, if you're already on the beer, we know it's either going really well or really badly. I'm not sure. <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> <laughs> I poured myself a Negroni, some gin in your oh, honor. Nice. I haven't tried. I haven't tried your forget me not no though. But as soon as I, it's available here, I'm getting in on that. There will be a bottle coming your way as soon as it is. I think we are. This is why this is my last <laughs> bottle. My last bottle, and it's as you can see, very empty. But our next batch is being made in the new year. So once that's made, Love you'll it. get some. I promise. That was my ulterior motive for this. Um, <laughs> how, how did Forget Me Not uh, come about? Were you always like a big gin drinker? Um, I was. You know what? I, I mean, gin is something I kind of grew up with. And then I had a really bad encounter with gin. <laughs> the night I got my final, like your school finals results. Um, me and a good friend of mine, uh, I'm going to shame him, Malarkin, we drank far too much gin and, uh, and I had to give it a miss for a few years. And then a couple of years ago, I just, I got back into it. I think it was moving to the UK again and it's just been, you know, it's such a good drink and I missed it. And I have a bunch of friends who are in the drinks industry in Scotland and we were just sitting around one day and we were like, you know, all these guys in the business are doing it. You know, some of, some of them whom we know. Right. We were like, why don't we do one? So it was just this very like fun and we had so much fun tasting, testing and coming up with the recipe. And that was probably the best part of it. Um, and yeah, and it's been great. And then we have this great part of it, which is part of the proceeds go to support arts. So right now, the first project we're doing is we're paying for artist studios for um, graduates of Glasgow Art School. So, because arts funding has been, you know, shut down all over the world or cut all over the world. And you know how important it is for everyone's development and for society as a whole. So the plan is to, as we launch in other places, that we support arts projects all over the world. Amazing. A win-win all around. Yeah, between... All, all of my uh, my Outlander friends, I'm, I have a, a stocked liquor cabinet. I feel like I just need like <laughs> <laughs> to start my own vodka. Wait or for Sophie to start her wine, and exactly. then. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so uh, I want to tease some things coming up uh, on this in this next hour. Um, we are going to take some of your audience questions, guys. The way that we're going to do this is if you go down to the bottom of your Zoom screen, there's a Q&A feature at the bottom of the screen. So all you have to do is enter your entire name, first and last name, exactly, down there, um, and put your first and last name, put your question, and just know that if you put a question there, you are consenting to potentially being on camera. Yes, big time. We're going to make you a star today. Um, I want to see everyone come... PJs. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> now is your time to shine. Um, also, later on in the show, we do have some two guest appearances from some jokers that we know uh, that have sent in some videos. Who could it be, Katrina? What do you think? I have no idea. Hmm. <laughs> um, and we've got some stuff to give away. We've got we've got books and we got booze. This is this is this is all you need in life. I mean, this is all you need in life, really. Right. <laughs> Actually, let's start with, I'm going to give away two things right now. I'm going to read off names. And the way this is going to work, guys, is I'm going to read your name off. And you're going to get an email after the show from our folks at Symphony Space getting your information. And then we'll get you the actual uh, prize. So first, for Forget Me Not, we got one bottle here first to lead off with. This is what it's you're going to get. I'll do the, like, Forget Me Not. It's going to be a full bottle, presumably, not a <laughs> yeah. bottle. No, I, I, I will send a full new unopened bottle, yes. <laughs> um, Nancy, I'm going to butcher your last name. It's H-R-N-C-I-R. -I I'm not even going to try and say it. But Nancy, congratulations. You're our first recipient of Forget Me Not Gin. Woo! Um, and uh, Sassanac Spirits, of course, is giving us a couple bottles. The first bottle is going to go to Amber Johnson. So congratulations. Yay, Nancy and Amber. Woo. Okay, so um, let's talk a little bit about this insane year. We've all had bizarre years, to say the least. Um, what has a typical, has there been a typical day for you this year? Oh, Do you settle no. into kind of a, a normal or what? It's been so bizarre. Um, you know, I was in LA when it all sort of kicked off and I flew back on the 14th of March and then there was this very strange four months where I was sort of confined to my apartment in Glasgow. Like we were sort of, you're not allowed to go further than five kilometers. Right. Um, the weather was really shit most of the time. <laughs> so it was just, <laughs> I've, I've learned a lot about myself this year. Not all of it's good. <laughs> I think I've realized that like- You need, need some structure? I, is, that the, is that the takeaway? I, 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 I need people telling me what to do and where to be. And then I'm good. And then I can rebel against it. And I'll be like, don't you tell me what to do. But actually I really need it. <laughs> um, but it's, yeah, it's weird. This whole, you know, I would go through phases where I'd be super motivated and I would do lots of things. And then I would have a week where I may not have gotten out of bed before one in the afternoon most yeah. days, you know, it's, it's a very strange, very strange time. And I'm a very social person and I really missed that interaction with people. Um, Did the book club but, start, it seemed like it started right around. Did it start because yeah, of like your new environment? Yeah, yeah. Was that a way of kind of connecting to people? Amazing. And that's been one of the best things, like having that little community and you know, there are times and I keep saying it when we're doing it because I feel very odd because I feel like I'm just sitting talking to myself. But, you know, the fact that before everyone puts in their questions and it makes me think about what I'm reading in a different way and it makes me look at books in a different way. And even trying to, you know, I try and vary. I flip between male author, female author. Um, I think one next books I'm going to do is um, transgender author as well. And I just try and go around the globe. And it's been also that kind of thing of trying to find books that are translated into multiple languages. Cause you know, everyone who's in the book club is from all across the world. So it's because it eliminates a lot of books if they've only, if they're only in English or whatever, but it also forces me to sort of think outside my comfort zone and think outside the sort of top 10 on like some reading list. And it's yeah. been great. And, you know, people seem to, be really enjoying it as well and it just feels like a community so that's kind of cool and I'm hoping once all of this ends is that we can do them in person or do a few in person because that would be nice to not feel like I'm just talking to myself in a room <laughs> the whole time you know would, um, would you would you ever write a book yourself god I don't know I'm I'm again it, it goes back to that thing of somebody telling me what to do and to do it <laughs> like Katrina, write a book. I, I, 
<laughs> yeah. Sure. Now you have to do I don't it. Know. I, d I, I have such admiration for people who can create those worlds and sustain an idea for that long. I mean, it's, you know, I that the idea of writing fiction sometimes to me seems mystical or magical, and I don't know. I, I also think I'm a bit of a late bloomer, so maybe I'm just not ready in that phase of my life yet, and maybe it would be something I'd try later, but I don't know. Never should say we, never to anything, right? Should we, yeah, exactly. Should we classify Clanlands as fiction or nonfiction? Have you read it? <laughs> is, well. Is it <laughs> From some of the stuff I've read in it, I think, as as I always say, Sam never let truth get in the way of a good story. So <laughs> there's definitely some bending of the. I was like, oh, did I really say that? Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> what about the, but he it's told the story, he told the story to me and in the book, uh, the, both of them did about a whiskey tasting at Graham's apartment. Oh, that's true. That part, that's true. Do you remember that oh, happening that way know, and Duncan breaking remember. the table? I mean, I think Duncan broke the table, no? Yeah, that's, yeah, exactly. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was madness. Um, the read-through the next day was probably one of the funniest and yet painful days of our lives. <laughs> um, <laughs> everyone was just dying. But uh, I, I, Meryl, I think, I'm going to bring her into this because, you know, Meryl always comes across as the most sensible person, but I think she was responsible in putting me to bed and they set my alarm wrong. So that's why the next morning, <laughs> I think they were like hammering on my door and had to like drag me out of the oh, house. No. And, yeah. <laughs> it was good fun though. We, it's, we it's, tasted a lot of whiskey and we learned nothing. There you go. It, it's not like you haven't been working at all this year because you have obviously starred in Star Force, which is clearly going to change I mean, your career. It's, <laughs> we just had an article in The Guardian. I, I think... <laughs> Jimmy Fallon was talking about it with James. You know, it's it's actually, it's probably one of the most popular things I've ever done. <laughs> has, has Scorsese come to you saying, I need like a Russian mall and you're the, you're the lady for me? You know, it's just, it's hard because my phone just doesn't stop ringing. And and I, and you know, it's, it's, I keep saying, it's like, I didn't even work on that accent. You know, it's hard to believe. It just came naturally. <laughs> have you ever have you ever met or do you know McAvoy? He's one of my favorites, one of my other favorite yeah, Scotsmen. Yeah, we've I've met him a few times. He's great. He's a madman, but in the best he's, possible he's way. Obviously, the best captain. <laughs> <laughs> I do appreciate because obviously I've exploited yours and Sam's talents for comedic purposes in the past. I'm curious because I always get asked about the couples therapy sketch that we did with you guys. Um, it was a lot of fun. It was fun. I, I was going to ask you, were you wary at all? Did you, because you guys dove right in. As I recall, it seemed like you guys were having a blast with it. Was it something that felt like, oh God, what are we doing? Or was it with okay? Of course. No, I, I want to know selfishly about couple Oh, therapy. right. No. Well, from my recollection, we just showed up that morning. We didn't, we didn't know what was happening, right? <laughs> I mean, I think I'd sent. I think I'd sent the script. I think, as often is often the case, maybe it didn't get to you, and you had a thousand things, and you probably didn't see it until you literally sat down in that chair. Or maybe somebody gave it to me, and we didn't look at it. <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> Not going to assign blame. I thought it was fun. Look, it's so funny because I, I don't think, I you know, I don't think comedy is my natural go-to. But it's so fun being silly and just letting go and going for it. So any opportunity I get to make a fun, usually just like, yeah. <laughs> well, the, the, I, we I, should I, do another. We should do I was going to say, rare, yeah. rarely does a day go by that I don't get a request for another one. So when all this and, madness and is Sam over. And I obviously are such serious people and have no fun <laughs> at all when we are Clearly. working together. So. Clearly. <laughs> um, speaking of your co-stars, some former co-stars, let's start with a, a, a little visit virtually from one of your friends. Um, the great Graham McTavish sent in a delicious piece of video. Lady M, I, I <laughs> have you say, please. Thank you very much. All right. I'm just getting to know him now, so I don't feel like I'm ready to call him that. But he did send in something very much in the holiday spirit. Uh, let's see what uh, Graham McTavish sent us. Take it away. Greetings. Merry Christmas from New Zealand. I am in quarantine, hence the dirty window and the drab curtains. But I decided to sort of festive it up with my my shirt, sort of red and green, very kind of, um, very kind of Noel. Now, a poem, I think. 
This is a poem in Scots. Yes, by Alexander Gray, telling the familiar tale of no room at the inn. A tale familiar to you, I'm sure, Josh. Christmas Carol by Alexander Gray. It was a cold, cold nicht at the back of the year, and snow lay deep, and the stars shone clear. And Mary kind her time was near as she came to Bethlehem. When Joseph saw the tune see thrang, co he, I hope I be in the rang, but I'm thinking we'll find a place here lang. But there wasn't any room for them. She co co she, oh Joseph loon, real tired am I and would fain lie down. Is there no a bed in the hill of the tune? For fairer I canna gae. For the ale whose door she kick it ben. But there was sick a steer a fremit man. She thought to herself, I dinna ken what me and my man can do. The sign she spak, we'll have to lie in the byre this nicht among the kai, and the cattle beasts for a body mon try to thaw what needs mon be. And there among the stray and the corn, well the house and mood, and the barney was born. Or oh, wasn't that a miss joyous morn for sinners? Like you and me, for the bairn that was born that nick to the store, come do frae heaven to take a war o'er fecklessness, and bring us all safe hame in the hindering. Lord, at this yuletide send us licked, he mercy on us and had us wrecked, for the sake of the bairn he born that nicked, O oh, mak us better men. Happy Christmas. <laughs> um, Aww, so sweet. Very sweet. Shout out to whoever had to close caption that because um, <laughs> yeah. you, you earned your keep. What I, what I love though is he starts off and it, this is so great. He has one side is like, I mean, these drab curtains and dirty windows and absolutely disgraceful. And then he's like, and then the rap -a -da -da -da. it's like <laughs> he's. So camp and yet such a hard man. It's very. I That's love why it. it works. Yeah, no, yeah. he's 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 amazing. I call. I think I got like twenty percent of that, and yet because it's him, <laughs> I, I don't care. I can listen to him to read the phone book. It's amazing. Oh. Um, so uh, a little on on Outlander. Obviously, I think a, a sizable portion of the audience here maybe is familiar with your work in that. Um, I'm just curious. When you think back to, I think you haven't shot any of season six yet, right? You guys no, are haven't started. So very, just very soon though. Okay, okay. So on season five, I mean, apples and oranges, how you feel on the set in season five versus those first days in season one. Does it feel like when you walk onto that set, is it familiar? Does it feel like a, a, a much different attitude for yourself or what? Oh, it's, I mean, it's so different. I mean, if we're talking about those first days when I started back in 2013, uh, um, <laughs> I was so green and I mean I I was sort of terrified but also after the first day of filming it felt so amazing and there was such a great atmosphere with everybody it was just there was a chemistry that really really clicked amongst cast crew you know producers writers it just was like it just seemed to flow really well and so it was so much fun, but I was also, every day was like such a new experience and I had no idea. I mean, I had worked on small things for a couple of days here and there and things like that. So it was just, I was like wide-eyed and bushy-tailed. Um, <laughs> season five. Um, <laughs> you're, you're Comes in with a drink, her cigarette. She's like, <laughs> whatever. <laughs> but there's a difference and it's in a real lovely way it sort of feels like a much more mature family. And then obviously last season, um, myself and Sam became producers and it felt, you know, the responsibility is more and you just have a different overview of the whole production. And, you know, I think it's, it's a challenge every year that you go back, you know, I think to find the newness or to find that kind of like enthusiasm again because you know I think the hardest thing about starting every new season is that you know that you've nine months of really hard graft ahead of you 
And that can sometimes be a little like, oh God. But then we still have that great camaraderie and the crew has been with us most of them from the very beginning. So it does feel like this great family. But yeah, I don't know. It's every season brings its new challenges. I mean, going back for this one's going to be such a different ball game because of COVID and everything that that entails and all the protocols. And it's going to be really strange because we do all hang out and sit and chat and like it's a very social set and we all get along so well and that's going to be yeah really tough and like that's the one thing I'm the most apprehensive about is that kind of being at work being with all the people that you love and that you want to just like hang out with but having to be at a remove you know have you seen anybody like socially distanced get togethers with any of the cast members? Have you been able to see them Not in person? Not for a while. Um, I did see during the summer when things were loosened up a little bit here, I saw Sophie and I saw Sam and I saw Graham. Um, I saw Sophie probably the most, um, but um, lot early on when they sort of opened lockdown in Scotland, I saw Lauren um but yeah i haven't seen anyone in a while it's sort of it's just been really you know strange yeah. around here um without getting into you know any spoiler stuff i'm just curious as the added time giving you guys more time again as a producer now like are there more scripts now ready to go did this added kind of time let you guys yeah, find what you want to sure. do going into season six we're we're so far ahead of where we would normally be when we start but i think part of the reason that we have started so much later than a lot of other shows or taken our time is I think, you know, Matt and, and all the writers, I think there was a, you know, there's obviously a big decision to make and they very early on didn't want to shoot a sort of COVID friendly version of Outlander because they just felt that that would completely strip our DNA. Yep. And so I think why we've come back so late is because they wanted to make sure that we're able to tell the story that they would have always wanted to tell. Um, and that's been really complicated to work out, but we want to have scenes with a lot of people. We want to have intimate scenes. We want to have that kind of family feel. We want to have the feel of Fraser's Ridge. So in trying to make that all possible, it just meant that we had to really go through these extra hoops and make sure that we have the systems in place in Scotland that we can do that. You know, I think everyone's crossing their fingers and hoping that it, it's all gonna go smoothly, but with this virus, it seems to be changing all the time. And, you know, there's like great news where it's like, yay, we have vaccine. And then it's like, and there's new variants. So we'll, we'll <laughs> yeah. see, see what happens, but. Fingers crossed. Yeah. Uh, um, we, uh, I, I want to test out a, a little feature that uh, Zoom provides. We have a little poll. Let's see. Let's see what the audience here watching thinks is. Uh, what's their favorite Outlander episode? Obviously, I can't do a bunch of them, but I've got uh, two of the favorites that would often come up. Um, guys, feel free to vote on the wedding or a Malcolm, and tell us which of those is your favorite. Any predictions, Katrina? What are they going to say? I think. I think it'll be hard to beat the wedding. No. I'm, I'm an impartial <laughs> journalist. I can't go there. <laughs> I mean, first love, second love is good too, but first love, it's, yeah. <laughs> Do you find it, it, obviously now that you're a producer, I would think you watch now cuts of episodes and stuff. That's part and parcel of it. Like, is it, can you separate? Are you okay watching yourself? Are you better now than you once were? Some actors can never oh. watch themselves. How are you with that? Yeah, I think I'm, better now obviously it's still you know and as an actor you you always feel like there's another cut another take that they should have used that was better <laughs> you're like I'm sure there was another take that was so much better than that one um but yeah I, I've actually found all this part of it really interesting and and also you know as actors we're we get so sort of caught into our role and like, well, we wanted that scene to go this way because this is what our character. And then you realize, well, they needed to move scenes around or they needed to rejig the story for certain reasons. And it can be really hard to sort of wrap your head around that as an actor when you go from filming one version and seeing the end product, but seeing behind the scenes of why things needed to be done. 
yeah. has been really interesting and just learning more about story structure and why things work or don't or, and, and figuring out, I, I love the sort of problem solving of it. You know, it's like, okay, well, this isn't, but maybe we can find a reason to put it somewhere here and have those characters say it instead of actors and, and all. It's, it's quite cool. Uh, let's see if, uh, hopefully most, most of you have voted by now. Can we see the results? Let's see what uh, what people voted on. I'm curious. Ah, see? <laughs> Wedding and a wash. For the last time. <laughs> you called it. Um, what do you make of, obviously, Outlander now five seasons in, in stronger than ever, now permeating the pop pop culture? This Is Us called it out this past I know. And season? didn't the boys have it in us? Oh, I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know that. Does that yeah. when it when when it gets into another show is that just like a marker is that bizarre? Even the, no, I, I tell you what, the one that was like the oh we've made it, we've landed, whatever. It was it was mentioned in The Simpsons. I mean, you can just die and go to heaven, then, right? You're good. You're good. <laughs> like, that show knows what it is. It was like a judge in a courtroom. It was amazing. Amazing. Um, amazing. But yeah, it's been it's been actually in quite a few shows. I think it was on something else. You know, I usually see it on Twitter. People are like, ah, did you see this clip or whatever? And that's to be part of like, you don't know, the cultural sort of zeitgeist is like, that's amazing. It's huge. It's huge. Um, okay. I've got a couple silly games for you. This is my first challenge Yay, for you. Love games. All right. So I played this with Sam pretty recently. Uh, these are close up photos of two of your co-stars. With Sam, I had uh, you or Graham and see, and see if he could decipher who it was. He, by the way, got every single one of these correct. Well, I so should I don't fucking know. hope so. Excuse me for cursing, <laughs> but Graham, me, I mean, but these are really I hope hard. I'm a lot less hairy. And... Well, you'll we'll see. These photos are pretty, pretty hard because they're pretty close okay. up. But you tell me, is this Sam <laughs> or Graham? Let me know. You see that? Well, what am I looking at? No. That's part, that's part of the challenge. That's part of... <laughs> it looks like the moon. <laughs> like that's what... Can um, you tell what body part that is? I'm going to give you a hint. Is it someone's ass? <laughs> <laughs> like, you need a new printer. <laughs> <laughs> Don't blame me. Blame your eyes. What do you I guess 50-50 shot. Is that Graham's head? You got it. Perfect. <laughs> or the there moon. Ah, yay. Yeah. <laughs> this, this one is delicious. What do you think? I mean, <laughs> that looks like... Does that, that looks like something none of us should know what that looks no, like. No, does that conjure up um, any memories from set? Okay, that is... It, it's either a jawline or... Is it a jawline? I'm going to go with that sounds. No, the stubble's weird, though. What is that? It is, is it Sam? It is Sam. I think, was that his nose? Oh. I don't even know myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, anyway, I got it right. There we go. You got it right. You got it right. Here we go. Oh, bloody hell. I didn't say it would be easy. <laughs> um, That is... You're taking this way too seriously, is, by the way. I'm gonna go with, um, I don't know what it is. It is actually, I think it's a bicep of of those gorgeous biceps of McTavish. Oh. Oh, there you go, McTavish. Damn okay. it, I'm already below or behind. No, you're doing great. I don't yeah. know if the. Is that, is that a nose? That's Graham's nose. It is Graham. Know. It is not his nose. It is his delicious ear. <laughs> I'm blaming your pictures. Well, I think tell. it's almost. I think it's almost worse if you get if you're good at this. So I think you're a winner if you lose in this game. Um, I have no idea. We're going to say that Sam's butt. <laughs> when in doubt. All right, that was Sam. I think it's his clavicle. I think it's like right in the neck. <laughs> right in the neck. All right, we'll, we'll, we'll quit while we're behind. Um, you did great, you did great, you did great. Um, let, let's go through some best worsts, okay? Uh, give me okay. a best or give me a worst. Uh, these can be rapid fire or anecdotes, whatever you want. Um, when I say hardest worst scene to film of Outlander, what do you think? Was there like one, what's the shittiest day? What's the hardest day? Oh, God. Uh, uh, uh. 
I'm just going to go with the stop helping going over. Um, I had done it so many times in auditions and then it was so cold and so late at night and then it's just a weird it's it was a, it's just a weird thing and we'd said it too often so it just felt impossible to get out naturally and then there was horses and people falling over and trying to jump off horses and yeah it was and then and then I love her and she's such a sweetheart um but then the accent coach kept coming in and I was just like it is not the time <laughs> so it was yeah there's there's many moving parts here God. I don't care if you can't hear the cut. <laughs> you know, is there so. a happiest day? Is there a happiest scene? I mean, it's I'm sure there are tons. Oh, but. that's hard to that's hard to do. Um, I mean, we I think I always say this one, but it was really magical um, when Claire and Jamie they dance to the Stones where right before she goes back, and it was just because that place is really special. Um, and I think the bloody name of it, um, Loch Rannoch. And we had spent so much time up there and that was one of the last times we filmed up there. And we went that morning and it was like literally Disney snow. It was like somebody had just, whatever, <laughs> put this like blanket, this tiny just dusting of the most beautiful snow. And the light there is really amazing. And even though we put those stones there and they are fake, they look so real and they look like they should be there because we shoot in kind of a fairy ring. Um, and it's it's just really special. And just the scene came together really well. And, you know, Sam and I were really in sync and the crew got really emotional and that very rarely happens. Um, but it was really, yeah, it was cool. It was really beautiful. When I say like your worst or weirdest modeling job, is there one like oh, bizarre... God. So many. <laughs> I'm sure that, that there's your book, by the way, probably. Yeah. <laughs> oh, um, I, I I don't know why it, it wasn't terrible, but it was just weird and funny. Um, we I we had this fashion show in Paris, um, and I think it was for Izzy Miyake, maybe. But we had to. It was really, and you know, it was very magical, and they had this kind of like magical music going on and but we had to walk out myself and one of my best friends had to walk out in swimsuits and then we were pulling little suitcases behind us with all the same print and then we had to open the suitcase at the bottom of the runway and take out this piece of fabric and then it unfolded into a coat and button it up and I got the worst fit of the giggles halfway down the runway and couldn't stop. And I was just crying, laughing. And then I couldn't get it buttoned correctly. And it was just, yeah, it was a disaster. And you just are so aware of like so many cameras and people. And it was just one of those moments where it was like that nervous laughter. I couldn't stop. <laughs> yeah. What about the best? Is there the best thing you've watched in quarantine? Have you binged any cool shows? Oh, Have you? Oh, so many, so, so many. I, there's been so much great, great content. I mean, it's hard not to, one of the things I love I, that was so brilliant and it's starting to be advertised on British TV because I had watched it on Hulu and now it's like coming to terrestrial TV here was The Great, which is brilliant. I love The um, Great. Oh my God. It's dark L black comedy. I love oh, that kind of thing. So, so funny. Good. I just love um, the writer whose name is escaping me now, uh, John something, but it's the just same one that so did, um, he did the did favorite. The the favorite, thank you, yes. Yeah, but Elle is amazing. Nicholas Holt is amazing. All the supporting cast are so good. I went around saying, huzzah, for months. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, it was so, so good. Um, Queen's Gambit, of course, so good. Um, I'm trying to think. I watched I watched the first cow, first cow the other night. Oh, yeah, yeah. I love. need to catch up on that. Everybody's loving that one. It's yeah. Beautiful. You know, very quiet, very slow, yeah. but beautiful. And then I also watched a movie last night, which was amazing. Not exactly cheery, happy, happy Christmas. Um, but I was bawling and it was just beautiful. Um, called Rocks. Um I, I think, think it was at Sundance. Yeah, I didn't see that yeah, one. Yeah, it's oh, it's just beautiful. It's a coming of age story. <laughs> Excuse me. It's obviously time for another drink. Yeah, um, same director who did Suffragette. So. Oh, great. Nice. I'm Very realizing 
I'm realizing I'm behind in, in our giveaways. I've got five Clan Lands books to give away. So here we go. Listen out for your name, guys. And if you hear you your name, great doorstoppers. Doorstoppers. <laughs> 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 uh, if you hear your name, you're going to get an email for this. So these are courtesy of Sam and Graham. Uh, Venla Kontanen, congratulations. Uh, Aviva Croninger, Linda Minutella, Terry Sales, and Ronell Schuler. I apologize for butchering your names, but congratulations, you guys are getting free Clan Lands books. Just on the whole Clan Lands thing, I yeah. we were talking about writing books and stuff. I am astounded by how quickly those guys did that. It's amazing to me. Like this is this is where Sam and I are very different, and I wish I had more of his just sit down and do shit. Because right. he is a machine. I mean, they they wrote it in whatever they. I, I think he started writing it whenever lockdown started, so March. So he wrote and published a book in so less rude. than a year. I hate like him. who who is he? No, Can he stop being so bloody? I don't know, productive. It's well, this rude. is my, my my conundrum. It's like part of me is desperate to have somebody I know and am friendly with be the next James Bond, but part of me is like, wait, maybe this just could be insufferable for the rest of my life. Do I want Sam? <laughs> yeah, we do. We do. We, we want do. the perks that come How with How amazing being would that be? Oh my God. I mean, come on. Come on. I, um, I, you know, we could dine out on that for years. You're right. You're right. <laughs> you're right. <laughs> so, Sam you know, we could take up, we, we, we could put up with the extra, you know, oh yeah, I'm James Bond stories. For, for all the perks that we would get. No, this is right. fair. You're smart. <laughs> smarter than I. Uh, let me do a little plug for uh, the, one of the charities that we're, we're doing uh, th this all for today. Um, Katrina, you know this well, and I appreciate you. You didn't, you know, you signed on immediately when I asked you. Um, but to let you guys know, um, we're benefiting not only Symphony Space, but this organization called Harlem Is. Uh, Harlem Is is a, a new website. It's actually harlem-is.org. Uh, and it's a website that's chronicling the cultural history of Harlem here in New York, where I'm from, where I was born and raised. Uh, it's an outgrowth of decades of work my mom has done through the nonprofit she started called Community Works NYC. Woo! Um, and so, yeah, in, in over 20 plus years, um, more than 3 million people have viewed the Harlem Is exhibitions. And now all of it's there on this amazing website. It's the only website of its kind that documents Harlem's cultural history. Um, I really encourage all of you guys to check it out, harlem-is.org. Um, and you guys have already contributed, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. But obviously, if you are so inclined, feel free to donate more. Truly, as Katrina was saying, um, you know, it's a tough time for the arts to get any, any money right now. So every dollar truly counts. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and check it out and support, support Mama Horowitz. Amazing. Yay, Mama Horowitz. <laughs> I have to say, one of my most favorite gigs I've ever been to was up in Harlem at the Apollo. Oh, amazing. I went to see Ben Harper with the Blind Boys of Alabama. I mean, this is years and years ago, but it was amazing. So cool. So cool. Uh, I want to talk to you a little bit about um, your film work. I mean, you it's tough because obviously Outlander sucks up a lot of time, needless to say. Yeah. Um, but, I, but I was thrilled that you worked with Christian Bale and James Mangold and Ford v. Ferrari. I'm also really excited that I'm next going to see you in uh, one of my favorite human beings, Kenneth Branagh's film, Belfast. Oh, and so, he is just the nicest, sweetest man. He is. I mean, he? it. Yeah. I, I still can't quite believe it happened. Um, you know, I, it was so devastating that Outlander went down and that we weren't working, but this kind of gem just came on, you know into my lap and we somehow managed to perfectly place it you know between the opening up in in sort of July August and the closing down in September October um and it's such a I've seen I've seen bits from it and it's it's so amazing it's so lovely and it's it's very personal to Ken and it's right. very much about his childhood or you know, interpretation of his childhood um, growing up in Belfast. And um, I play his mom, Jamie Dornan plays his dad, um, Judy Dench plays his granny, and then the lovely, lovely Kieran Hines plays his granddad. Um, and it's just great. And we have the most amazing young actors as well. Like it was just, it was also one of these magical films. I think everybody was so excited to be working. And Ken 
has the most amazing crew and he's super loyal and he works with the same people over and over again. And so it's truly like a family and it was, he has one of the most diverse crews that I've ever worked on as well, which was amazing to see, you know, so many women, so many people from different backgrounds. And we all were in this very contained little bubble for seven weeks and it was brilliant. It was just so much fun. And yeah, I, I'm really excited for it to come out and for people to see it. And I think people are going to be very surprised, yeah. um, but hopefully in a really good way. No, I'm sure. I, I, I've, I adore Kenneth Branagh. I grew up with his films. And yeah, I, it's, it's one of the people that he's been on the podcast a couple of times and getting to know him a little bit. He just lives up to everything. Everything you said is correct. He's sweet and nice and just like the real deal. And so I'm so excited. Most intelligent and, you know, I think it's the first time I've I've had a note from a director who's quoted D. H. Law and says part of the note. <laughs> you know, you're like, not even, not even yeah. an obnoxious way. Somehow he can make it seem like sweet and just whatever. Yeah. Exactly. No, it is totally. <laughs> and it was very funny one day. Jamie Ken went up and gave a note and I think quoted Shakespeare, but you know, in, in a, it's not in an obnoxious way at all. And Jamie was so funny. He just turned around and went, Ferris Bueller. <laughs> so brilliant. Love it. And the camera laughing his head off. He was like, exactly. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> um, all right. We have one more uh, special guest. We've teased it. Uh, let's give him a moment to shine. Um, the great Sam Hewen has sent in oh, some greetings. Oh, I know. Oh. Roll our eyes, but let's enjoy <laughs> this uh, greeting and holiday story from the one and only Sam Hewen. Well, it's Christmas. Well, it's almost Christmas. And I have to say a huge thank you to you, Josh Horowitz. Look at all these lovely gifts you send me. I really, I really um, couldn't thank you enough. Obviously, Katrina Balp has also sent me lots of gifts and Graham too. I mean, I've got hundreds here. And um, these are obviously the ones you can see, but well, there's loads. I mean, the whole house is so festive. <laughs> Merry Christmas to me. It's, um, it's honey nut wheat. Um, oh, look, this is addressed to me because I did it myself. But look, I hope you're well. Wishing you all a Merry Christmas. And um, uh, obviously this is for charity and uh, we are donating this wonderful book that is a New York Times number one bestseller. <laughs> did I mention that? Um, uh, very proud of this book. So we're going to dedicate some of those and some of this award-winning whiskey Obviously, we know uh, fans of Outlander uh, love alcohol, um, so we must obviously present them um, with some of this. It is obviously hard to get your hands on, but there is more coming in January. So hold on to your hats. That's the only reason I wore this, just for the pun. Um, so here we are, wishing you all a, a wonderful time. I'm sorry you can't be there in person. Obviously, it's been a, a crazy year. Um, but for for all of us, I think um, you know we're 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 getting there. I hope. Um, obviously, we're going back to Outlander soon. Um, I'm still working on a movie here. I know Katrina's been on her fantastic movie, um, and it's it's been busy, right? And of course, the the highlight of 2021 it is 2021 coming up uh, will be Men in Kilts. It's a new show on stars, um, high drama, um, lots of nudity, uh, gratuitous violence, uh, and a, a bald man with a beard who seems uh, hungry uh, a lot of the time. So without further ado, I've been asked to, to write, uh, a wee, um, write, read a wee poem to you all. Uh, it's not wee, it's quite long. It's called oh, A Visit I from St. Nicholas by Clement Clark Moore. 1779 till 1863. So settle back, pour yourself a dram if you have one. If you don't, um, hopefully you'll win one. Um, and uh, wishing you all a Merry Christmas. Much love to you, Josh. Miss you, buddy. Um, to you and yours, uh, Slanger. Mm. It was the night before Christmas, when all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while the visions of sugar plums danced in their heads. And Mama in her kerchief, and I in my cap, had just settled our brains for a long winter's nap. When out on the lawn there arose such a clatter, I sprang from the bed to see what was the matter. 
Away to the window I flew like a flash, tore open the shutters and threw up the sash. The moon on the breast of the new fallen snow gave the luster of midday to objects below. When, what to my wondering eyes should appear, but a miniature sleigh and eight tiny reindeer with a little old driver so lively and quick, I knew in a moment it must be Saint Nick. More rapid than eagles, his courses they came, and he whistled and shouted and called them by name. Now, Dasher, now, Dancer, no Prancer and Vixen. On, Comet, on, Cupid, on, Donner and Blitzen. To the top of the porch and to the top of the wall. Now, dash away, dash away, dash away all. As dry leaves that before the wild hurricane fly, when they meet with an obstacle, mount to the sky. So up to the house, top the courses they flew, with a sleigh full of toys and St. Nicholas, too. And then, in a twinkling, I heard on the roof the prancing and pawing of each little hoof. As I drew in my head and was turning around, down the chimney St. Nicholas came with a bound. He was dressed in all fur from his head to his foot, and his clothes were all tarnished with ashes and soot. A bundle of toys he had flung on his back, and he looked like a peddler just opening his pack. His eyes, how they twinkled. His dimples, how merry. His cheeks were like roses, his nose like a cherry. His droll little mouth was drawn up like a bow, and the beard on his chin was as white as the snow. The stump of a pipe he held tight in his teeth, and the smoke it encircled his head like a wreath. He had a broad face and a little round belly that shook when he laughed like a bowlful of jelly. He was chubby and plump and a right jolly old health, and I laughed when I saw him in spite of myself. A wink in his eye and a twist of his head soon gave me to know I had nothing to dread. He spoke not a word, but went straight to his work, filled all the stockings, and turned with a jerk, and laying his finger aside of his nose, and giving a nod, up the chimney he rose. He sprang to his sleigh, and to his team gave a whistle, and away they all flew, like the down of a thistle, and I heard him exclaim, ere he drove out of sight, Happy Christmas to all, and to all, all good night. Good night, Banjava. Merry Christmas to you all and a happy new year. Hopefully the new one is going to be so good and we're all going to heal. Mwah, much love. Uh, that kiss wasn't for you, Josh. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good. You, He's got that's you, a, you that's a, have such a, a very interesting bromance. I don't even know how to define what we have, um, <laughs> but it's something. No, he as much as much crap as I give him, he's always very sweet, and I I'm very appreciative that he sent that to us. And he that's his audition tape to play Santa Claus in the next. Uh... I, I, I give him the job. <laughs> Come on. Um, let's try this out. Let's pray that Zoom technology works. Let's try to bring in one or two or three questions from the audience. I know there are thousands of them. Um, so here's what's going to happen. We're going to be pulled into the Zoom room. Make sure to turn your camera on if you're selected when you're sound on. There might be some awkward delays. Let's just see if this works, guys. Let's pray. Let's bring on our first victim. I mean, winner. <laughs> Let's see what happens. Here we go. Think positive thoughts, Katrina. I see someone. Do you? Hi, Josh. Hi, Kate. Oh, hi. It's Jesse Morris with an awesome backdrop. What's going Amazing. on with you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is actually from my office holiday party, but it's Home Alone house. So Amazing. <laughs> Hi, Jesse. What's, so what's your question? Thanks for being with us. Oh, yeah. Thank you for um, doing this. My question is for Kate. I know we talked about kind of what uh, TV shows you've been watching, but I was wondering if there's any music that you've been loving or clinging to during quarantine. I know I've been listening to Taylor Swift's new albums, and personally, Willow reminds me a lot of um, the Jamie Claire love story, personally. So I was just wondering if there's any music you've been kind of loving lately. Um, oh, I mean, it's been a long, well, I feel like it's been a long time, but I yeah. was definitely listening to a lot of Michael Kiwanuka mm. um, and a, my favorite a Dublin band, Fontaine's DC. Mm -hmm. um, a little punk Dublin band. And I, if people keep asking me what my favorite Taylor Swift song is. I have to confess, I think she's amazing. I don't really listen to her music, but I do think as a person and like 
how she carries herself and handles herself. She's amazing, but I, 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 I don't really listen. Sorry. No, to I just, I was listening to her new album and I was like, she's definitely watched Outlander before. And if she hasn't, she needs to immediately because she would. <laughs> I like they even listen to these new albums. So everyone's like saying it's, I think that'd be more my vibe, like the folky. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Good definitely, stuff. definitely. Thank, thank you so much, Jesse. Really appreciate Thanks, it. Thanks, Jesse. Yeah, thank you. Bye. All right, let's see who else we have here. Bring them on in. That was some good backdrop action. I should have, I know. I should have you know, I need, done something like no, that. No, no, you got the tree. You're beating me. I need a green screen in here, clearly. Uh, let's see. So we've we got, got someone, but she's on mute. Oh. Jenna Springer. Jenna, can you turn your video and, and your uh, audio on, please? There we there go. There she is. Hi, working? Jenna. Sorry, I'm on a new device. How are you guys? <laughs> Hi. What's your question? Um, all right. I guess my question um, is obligations. You didn't have to be anywhere, do anything, call anyone. What would be your perfect day? What would you do and who would you spend it with? Ooh, my perfect day. Um, okay. If I was being really just bougie and lush, uh, I would be staying in a really nice hotel <laughs> where... I can wake up um, and I can call room service because <laughs> there's nothing better than breakfast in bed made by other people. Um, yes. and, um, and then this hotel that I would be staying at would be right on the beach. So after I have my nice leisurely breakfast and I read the newspaper, um, then I would, I would go for a nice swim in the ocean. And I, of course, I would have to be with my husband. So I think that would be my there you day. Go. And then, and then you come back, and then you would order more room service. That would be just total loneliness, and maybe watch a movie. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Thank you, Jenna. Room service all around. We can all agree on that. Thanks for yeah, your question. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs> Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Happy holidays. Look at I know. This. this is working. Some people are like, I would climb a mountain, and I'm like, I would lay on my ass and do. <laughs> <laughs> I'm with you. There's a reason we get along. Let's see. Do we have another person in here? Uh, let's see. Hello, hello. Hi, Maria. Can you turn on your audio, please? Yes, hello, guys. Hi, Maria. Hi. Maria. Hi. Um, so, you've, you're working on Here is the Beehive, um, your new Thing you're producing um can you tell us anything about it how's it going are you enjoying it what has been like the most challenging part about adapting it i'm so excited and i'm so proud of you so yeah <laughs> thank you well i mean you know it's still very early days and um our wonderful author sarah crossan is um i think it's okay to say i think sarah's gonna write our screenplay um, and so it's with her, and, you know, she's doing all the hard work right now. In the beginning, it's a lot of just making sure that she's supported. And we've had lots of great conversations about what she wants to do with the script. And I loved the book so much. And I just thought I, these characters, I just fell in love with them as messed up and complicated and flawed as they are. Um, and, you know, I think this is the thing which people have to realize it takes a long time. We can't all write published books in eight months. <laughs> Sometimes these things take time to bring to fruition, but it's exciting. I think, you know, the thing about being a little bit more in control of stories you want to tell and your, your career, that's really, it's really exciting and it's really empowering. And, um, yeah, and I hope to do more of it. There. So <laughs> I, don't know, I don't know what else to say. <laughs> Thank you Happy so much, Maria. Thanks, Maria. All right, let's see. I think we have, hopefully, let's push our luck. One or two more. Let's try it out. Let's see what happens. Let's see. Drum roll. Vanessa has popped in. Hi, Vanessa. Turn on your audio, please. Hi, Vanessa. Hi. Hi, Katrina. How are you? Um, um, how are you doing? Can you hear me? Yeah. Awesome. So I love your book club and I'm so grateful that you've taken this all this time with your fans to introduce us to just so many new like diverse and interesting voices. And I was curious that if you had 
one night and you can like, you know, have dinner with one of the authors and pick their brain, who would you choose and why? Oh. Oh, that's a really, ooh. That's such a good question. That's such a hard question. <laughs> um, I guess, the, the, you know, the first one that came to mind was Ocean Vuong. Yeah. So I, I, I don't know why. I just, that's what sprung into my head first. I, I thought his book was one of the most devastatingly beautiful books I've ever read. And, you know, his, his way of connecting with his mother and his ancestry and her story and his grandmother's story and just the way he told all that his his and his command of the language is just so beautiful and I think I'm so excited to see what he writes next um and I think he would be really fun to have drinks with so <laughs> he also I just I um I just also read yesterday in Variety that they're gonna adapt um on Earth we're briefly Amazing. So I'm excited oh that makes me so happy that makes me yeah. so happy because it is, it's the kind of film I would love to see, so. Yes, well, thank you again for introducing us to, you know, and taking the time. I mean, pleasure. thank you for joining and coming <laughs> along with the ride. It's been so right. cool. So Ride or die, CB Book Club. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Vanessa. Thank Merry, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um, I think we have one, what's that? And happy Hanukkah. Happy Hanukkah, exactly. Where's my menorah? Um, <laughs> one more. I think we have time for one more. Let's see what we got here. Can you turn on your video and audio if you're in here with us? Hi, Christina. Can you turn on your audio? Hi, Christina. Hey, guys. Hi, Hi Christina. Hey, Josh. Hey. How are you guys? Good. How are you? I am great. Thank you. Um, so I uh, was wondering, I'm very, very excited for Belfast. I'm so excited about that cast. And um, what I was wondering is, um, kind of being from an Irish family by marriage, I was wondering what was the most Irish thing that happened while you were on set over there? Oh my God. I, I was surrounded by so many people from Belfast. Um, and it was amazing. Ken, he had his sister and his brother and just like so many people from Ireland there. Um, the most Irish thing that happened was every single day. It was just like, you know, I, I think Irish moms are very universal. And there was some days where I would be playing a scene and I would literally be like, oh my God, I've turned into my mother. <laughs> <laughs> There's just a we certain, all have that worry at some point. <laughs> yeah, there's a certain tone Irish mammies have when they're when they're giving an order or doing something. Um, but it was it was honestly I, I've never I've never been able to be in an Irish production before. And I was saying this to Sam at one point. You know, this must be what he feels like doing Outlander and doing a show about his home country and everything. And there is just this added layer of heart, I think, or something that, that it just feels so, I don't know, connected to your soul in a way, um, really, really special. Awesome. Thank well, you thank so you much, so, Christina. Thank you so much, guys. Merry Christmas. Merry, Merry Christmas. Christmas. Happy holidays. Thank you so much. Um, so we're just about out of time. Any any holiday traditions? What's uh, any big plans for oh, celebrating the New Year? Year? They're all out the window, you know. Yeah, I guess. Usually, usually, yeah. Usually we would have. I'm from a huge family, so we would have big family get-togethers and usually drunken scrabble that ends in arguments. That's generally the family tradition, and uh, hot whiskeys on Christmas Eve, but. Yeah, it's, it's very, it's going to be very different, but that's fine. You know, yeah. it's, I think one thing this year has taught me is that, you know, it's the little things, you can't sweat them. And it's about yeah. everyone being safe and, you know, the fact that we're going to move through this and, and hopefully come out on the other side a better, a better yeah. society, you know, yeah. having less there there is some hope, thankfully, at the end of this year and some light at the end of the tunnel. And I think we all we all need that. So that's that's a good place to end. Also, a good place to end is mention two other winners. We have two last winners that I want to mention. Uh, one more bottle of Sassanac whiskey goes to Stephanie Acevedo. Congratulations, Stephanie. You're going to get an email. 
And one more bottle of forget-me-not gin that's going to go to Jew Bay. So look out for an email. Congratulations to all the winners. Amazing. Um, so, okay, so we're just about out of time. The good news is, guys, if you've been watching live, you're going to get an email link to be able to watch this for the next two weeks. So you're part of an exclusive club. You can relive the magic. Um, mm -hmm. And one more <laughs> reminder, if you're so inclined, do check out harlem-is.org and send them another donation. If you're feeling really much holiday spirit, it's much appreciated. Um, I want to thank a bunch of people. I want to thank Symphony Space for hosting us. I want to thank my trusty producer, Sammy, who's done so much hard work for me over the years and all the Outlander stuff with Katrina and Sam. She always makes me look smarter than I am. I want to thank you guys for sharing some of your holiday with us. And of course, most of all, I want to thank Katrina for being so Aww. generous with her time. Thanks for this... having me. And a big shout out to Mama Horowitz because thank you. it's amazing what she's doing. And, you know, when I saw you post that originally, I was like, how bloody cool is that? So Yay, Mama Horowitz. Here's to her. I will cheers her. Indeed. Cheers. She's probably watching, so she appreciates that. Thank mm -hmm. you again, Katrina. Have a safe and ho a happy holiday, everybody. And uh, we'll see you in the new year. Happy holidays. Gosh, thank you so much and hope to see you soon. See you soon, I hope. Thanks. Bye, everybody. Bye,